Hey everybody, I wanted to uh, put on my flight jacket and talk about those Centurion patches. So there's the 100, 200, 300, notice how it says Enterprise Centurion. And this is a really special one, 100 night traps on the Enterprise itself. So they're called Centurion patches. And what they are is when you get 100 landings on a, a certain carrier, you uh, qualify for a Centurion. Uh, getting 300 on one ship is a lot. I did that all in one cruise. Uh, and getting 100 night ones, boy, I'll tell you, that's why I'm bald. I used to have a lot more hair, but those night landings scare the living crap out of you. And uh, that's where I started losing all my hair. But I thought you'd, you, you would like to see that. Hey, a little bit back to the, uh, the Top Gun original movie, a couple just uh, quick stories on that. So uh, on the flight deck, we talked about what does it take to uh, launch, uh, and that was an A7 or an F-14 Tomcat. The F-14 Tomcat was the hero of that movie. Now, the new movie, it's, it's the Hornet. It's the F-18 and actually Super Hornet, not even the Legacy Hornet, uh, which we'll get into it at some other time. Uh, but on that carrier, there was two scenes that, I, that I'd like to point out. Um, one was the flyby. Okay, so uh, we had briefed, that the F-14, Tom Cruise would have shot down the MiG, and now he's coming back to do a flyby of the tower. And uh, you see my buddy flying the F-14 low past the carrier, right below the speed of sound. Um, what most people uh, don't know is that actually further up wind, right after they made that pass, uh, they had an engine failure, actually a hydraulic failure. Uh, the engine burner can actually burned through the hydraulics it went out the, the side instead of the back like it's supposed to. The pilot lost all control, and uh, both he and the Rio had to eject. So you see in the movie, um, you know, there's ejections. So those do sometimes happen, not often. And uh, they were going high speed, so there was a very uh, uh, interesting. I was out on the flight deck and watched it, saw it happen. First thing you hear is two, poop, poop. And you go, that's a weird sound. Uh, there's the ejection seats firing. Um, but we were able to pick them up, and uh, uh, the, both the pilot and Rio were fine. Just uh, a tidbit that most people or wouldn't know. Okay, next thing I want to talk about here is uh, I, want, I want to really unpack a little bit of what it feels like to fly that low to the ground. You know, in, in the, new movie, the new movie Top Gun Maverick, you see incredible low speed, um, low speed, high speed, low altitude flying uh, done by an ex-Blue Angel, a buddy of mine, Walleye. And uh, the reason that, of that is that there's very few people who have the proficiency to fly that low. Uh, now, what does it feel like? So 200 feet you know, you're down to the ground pretty low. That would be a normal altitude for what they call ingress. We're coming into a target area. You're terrain mapping, um, trying to stay below the radar. Uh, to go below that, it starts to get a little little dicey. Uh, 100 feet, you really can feel the difference. But when you get on to 50 feet, you can really feel the earth. I mean, it's pretty interesting. On the Blue Angels, we do the sneak pass at 50 feet. That's where the lead solo pilot, which I was one of those, gets down and and plants the jet right on the deck. Now, 50 feet feels pretty good. I mean, the key here is you gotta have focus and you gotta have two types of focus. You have the focus of not hitting the ground, because by the way, you can only tie the record for the low pass, right? And then the other focus of not hitting anything else. So the way we have to do that is open up, focus down, open up, focus down. Human brain can do that 65 times a second. And uh, when you're in that state of high focus, you can quickly go from What's the, uh, where's the ground, where's the terrain, and uh, where's the sailboat mast that I need to climb? Back, forth, boom. What's your situational awareness? What's all around you? So what you're seeing, though, is very interesting. Um, you see in the trailer, Walleye goes by, and he's so low that the filming crew, the hair gets blown back, right? And you see the dust, you know, come up from the ground. Uh, you'll see in some of these videos my producer's going to add, you can see the, uh, from the, the shock wave of the jet going that low to the ground, whether it's the desert, which is in that case was, was, was blowing up some salt or, or dust or over the water. Uh, but what does it feel like if you're in the airplane? So, so here's what it feels like. Uh, at 50 feet, I'm focused way ahead. And here's the thing, you're going 600 miles per hour. So you gotta be focused way ahead of the airplane. It's like when you learn how to drive or when you're riding a bike. When you're learning, you're looking right in front of you, right? And the faster you go, the further ahead you have to look. And that's a trained skill. Uh, and so the, the key there is at 50 feet, I'm looking ahead. I'm, I'm making sure that I'm not going to hit anything, but I'm also making sure that I'm, I'm on the heading and the bearing that I need. Now you start to get lower. 
And at right about 40 feet, you can start to feel what's called ground effect, all right? That's the earth pushing back up. And this is crazy when you feel this in the airplane. You have to be very sensitive. It's called seat of the pants feeling. You start starting to feel the ground effect. And now when you, and when you get down to about 30 feet, Oh my, I mean, you're right on the edge because what you're feeling, that's less than the wingspan of the airplane. And you start to feel this ground effect. It's the earth pushing back up. And I, I gotta tell you, to hold that really takes all your concentration because you just wanna barely move that stick forward because your, your body's telling you, you know, survival, don't do that, don't do that. Because like I said, you can only match the record for the lowest pass, right? So, so you're really on the edge there and, uh, and you gotta feel it and you have to back off. So it's feel it and back off, feel it and back off. I call that nibbling the envelope. And when you're on the edge of high performance, that's what you want to do. You want to get to the limit and back off and reevaluate. Get to the limit, back off, reevaluate. Get to the limit, back off, because you can't hold it there the whole time. Downhill ski racers know this incredibly well, right? You get to that edge, but you cannot stay on the absolute edge. Because uh, one or two things are going to happen. Either you're going to bust it, and that's not a good thing, or you're going to need to back off. So I'm consciously nibbling on that envelope and uh, feeling the feedback that I'm getting from the earth, by the way. That, that is the compression of the air pushing the airplane back. Uh, it comes with experience. It comes with training, not just in flying, but in life. You know, the more you do things, the better you get to feel it. And when it becomes an unconscious competence where you can just feel this, you know you're in that high performance zone. All right, hope that was helpful. We'll have some more uh, fun tidbits for you later. Gucci out.